Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. Today we are going to discuss about McConkey's agar, which is uh, one of the agar that you start using right from your first year. Okay, so we will know about this McConkey's agar or McConkey's broth in detail. So mainly you have studied it for uh, lactose fermenting. Okay, for differentiating between lactose fermenting colonies and non-lactose fermenting colonies. Okay, to differentiate. So it is a differential media. Okay, so here are some examples which you can see uh, like E. coli. It gives a uh, different color to the media and even colonies are different. Enterobacter aerogenos, uh, yeah, aerogenes is also different than Proteus, Salmonella and Staphylococcus aureus. They are different okay so mainly the one which are non lactose fermenting they do not give a pink um, appearance to the media and even the colonies are colorless okay so you can uh, say here that proteus and salmonella they are non lactose fermenting colonies now about the mcconkey's agar so it is the first solid selective and differential media okay and it was developed in 20th century by Alfred Theodore McConkey's. The used it is used for isolation and differentiation of non-fastidious gram-negative rods. Now, fastidious organisms are one which are you can say stubborn and they require some crucial ingredients. Then and then only they will grow. And non-fastidious are one which are um, not that selective towards the ingredients they can grow on any media the mainly oh, sorry mainly the members of family enterobacteriaceae and pseudomonas are used okay or they are tested now this is the composition for mcconkey's agar now if you uh, remove agar you will get broth okay now there is uh, you can um, use commercially available dehydrated media form or you can collect all these ingredients from your lab and you can prepare McConkey's agar or broth in your lab. Now what is the principle of McConkey's agar? McConkey's agar is used for the isolation of gram negative enteric bacteria and differentiation of lactose fermenting and non lactose fermenting gram negative bacteria. Okay so you will see here mainly gram negative bacteria are focused or they are uh, tested because there is one factor that we will study further which inhibits the growth of gram positive bacteria okay now as we have seen the composition there is pan pancreatic digest of gelatin and peptones from meat and casein that provides essential nutrients vitamins and nitrogenous factors which are required for the growth of microorganisms. Then lactose monohydrate is a source of carbohydrate which is fermentable, okay? Fermentable sugar, you can say. The selective action of this medium is attributed by crystal violet and bile salts, okay? So what makes McConkey selective? Crystal violet and bile salts that inhibits most of the species of gram positive bacteria and that's the reason we can study selectively gram negative bacteria now sodium chloride it maintains the osmotic balance in the medium neutral red is the ph indicator that turns red at the ph below 6.8 so this is when the sugar is fermented okay and is colorless neutral red is colorless at any ph that is greater than 6.8 towards alkaline conditions neutral red is colorless and towards acidic condition it turns red now agar is a solidifying agent if you want to prepare plates you add agar if you want broth you remove agar from your preparation now what are the uses of mcconkey's agar mcconkey's agar is used for isolation of gram negative enteric bacteria used for differentiation of lactose fermenting and non lactose fermenting gram negative bacteria and it is used for isolation of coliforms, intestinal pathogens in water, dairy products and biological specimens. Okay, so there are some 
pathogenic tests uh, which are or tests are done for detection of pathogens okay in say uh, dairy product industry or any pharma industry where they want to test their product is free of pathogen or not so at that point for e coli mcconkey's agar is used as e coli comes in pathogens okay opportunistic so now about the preparation of mcconkey's agar so you can directly use dehydrated media you can weigh according to the instructions given on the bottle of the media to prepare mcconkey's agar or you can collect the ingredients from your lab and you can prepare okay then you just have to heat all the uh, ingredients when you add to distilled water you just have to heat it so that everything gets dissolved properly and then you plug your flask wrap it properly and sterilize by autoclaving then let it cool for uh, or let it come down to 45 to 50 degree celsius so that you can pour your plates easily okay and also you have to use sterile petri plates for making your uh, sterile mcconkey's agar plates okay so this is how you prepare your plates and then you do 18 hours of sterility testing um, to check whether autoclaving was done properly and then you inoculate your cultures so once you have inoculated your cultures you incubate your plates and you wait for results and interpretation so say you have a lactose fermenting strain or culture that is growing on your plate so how will you identify the strain should grow as red or pink and maybe it shows you some zone of acid precipitated bile okay surrounding the colony the red color is due to the production of acid from lactose as fermentation of lactose sugar has taken place and the absorption of neutral red that that's the reason as neutral red is the ph indicator it shifts from uh, yellow or you can say yellow colorless to red okay as acid is produced and subsequently the color change of dye is seen as the ph falls below 6.8 now suppose you have a non fermenting strain then how will you differentiate for example shigella salmonella they are uh, they grow on mcconkey's agar but the colonies are colorless and transparent and they typically do not show any uh, alteration in the media appearance uh, appearance that means there is no color change the the one that you see in lactose fermenting strains okay so that's the difference in lactose fermenting strains you will see color change as red or pink in non lactose fermenting you will not see any type of color change then these are some examples so you can see here uh, examples for lactose fermenting so if you get a question in viva that give one or two examples of lactose fermenting bacteria then you can answer as e coli enterobacter aerogens or klebsiella in case of non lactose fermenting salmonella shigella pseudomonas and what kind of bacteria are inhibited then gram positive bacteria are inhibited okay like staphylococcus aureus or staphylococcus epidermidis okay okay so i hope you like this video um do like my video give a thumbs up do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.